This episode of the Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in your backyard of Perrysburg, Ohio. They're fair, tra- fair trade certified, USDA, or USDA organic, and integrity is their core value to do the right thing even when no one is looking. Coffee, some coffees come in K-Cup gift cards available and free shipping over $50. Be sure to check out all the coffee and more that they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Kabuto wants us to make Welcome Kabuto t-shirts. Um, no. No. You're the, I would sell one of those to you. I've been I've been having I've been having for the past month almost almost every day, maybe Sundays probably not. Um some good old coffee from the Iron Bean Coffee Company and I did not have one today this morning and I just feel tired right now. <laughs> <laughs> Addiction's fun. <laughs> Now here's the thing though, Kyle. It's not that it's not that you feel tired because you didn't have it. It's because you've realized how good life can be without coffee. You now have a comparison. It's like yeah. it's like someone you'll hear someone say, "Oh, my eyes got worse after I started wearing glasses." No, you just have a thing to compare it against now. You now know how yeah. you should have been seeing. Same thing mm-hmm. with the coffee. If you're not drinking coffee every day, And then you have a bad day because you didn't drink coffee. It's not because you're addicted to the coffee. It's just you've now realized how amazing life is with coffee. Yep. All right, Jared, let's go ahead and get today's episode rolling. Austin, ask me that question again later. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today, good sir? Uh, you know, it's it's a Sunday. It's a, it's late on a Sunday. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start being real annoying about something on Twitter. I'm just I'm warning okay. everyone now. I'm gonna start live tweeting the ever loving hell out of a thing called Colock. It's my new favorite obsession and not enough people watch it. And uh, I'm going to force feed it down everyone's fucking throat until I, I, I bring some people to it. All right. Well, there's that. Uh, <laughs> um, it is it is our Sloop Hoops episode, Jared, where we review the Ohio State basketball game, give our thoughts, opinions, and talking about the upcoming games as well. So two games this last week, Jared. Uh, yeah, we were we were thinking about doing talking about the Minnesota game uh, earlier last week, but we decided not to because it wasn't worth a full episode to talk about it. So the first no. game, Ohio State, Ohio State defeats Minnesota seventy to forty five when Minnesota was up by two at halftime. Yeah, um, it, it it felt like it felt like Rutgers all over again. It was a game that you were counting on winning. And it looks like all of a sudden, ah, crap, this is going to be a dog fight. More on Rutgers later. This all crap, this start this is looking like it's a dog fight. And then Ohio State pulled away in the in the second half. It was it was almost like watching an Ohio State football game. Especially like, you know, Trestle era Ohio State football games where they'd let like Kent State hang around for an entire half and then knock their doors off in the second half. Mm-hmm. Um Gangland says even urban. I mean, of course, games like that happen every once in a while, but no. Not as often as as Trestle. Urban would let, like, bad Big Ten teams hang around a little too long. Trestle would let bad Mac teams hang around a little too long. Yeah. So yeah, this game here, and we're gonna we're gonna compare this with the other game here. We'll talk about the second part of the episode here, but 
Exactly, Gangland. Yeah, the, the, this the second half of this game is is the potential of what this hot seat can be. Like they scored forty seven points in the second half, more points than Minnesota did all game, and it seemed like they just could not miss. They were just on a tear. They did everything they wanted to against Minnesota that second half, and this is the team that I expected out of them that what they can do down the stretch. Now, can they put it together in a full game? We haven't seen that yet. Hopefully they can uh, coming up um, later next month. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not with given the, given the schedule that Ohio state is going to be dealing with. I'm, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm just, I don't, I'm not going to get too worked up about them letting Minnesota basketball hang around for a little too long before eventually figuring their stuff out. I, I, I get, I forgiveness. Just you, you are forgiven. It's fine. It's still, it's still a big 10 team. Is it, was it one of the better bay? No, it is not. But like, I, I give you forgiveness. It's fine. This is, this is, this is a tough, tough stretch of basketball games. They're going to be playing right now. And yes, gangland, mm-hmm. they won the game. Um, I'm not worried about it. Yep. Now, yeah, we're 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 gonna pretty much skim over Minnesota because this is this is what we expected. There isn't really too much to talk about other than just they were hitting shots. They shot very well from the three point line. Uh, they did really well rebounding. Like every player it seemed like it seemed like a lot of players really got in got into it here. Um, Liddell doing Liddell things, uh, Wheeler doing Wheeler things, even Zed Key uh, contributing a lot here. He he ended up with 9.7 rebounds in this game, too. A a lot of people really chipped in to um, really just make this a no contest in that second half. Yeah, and uh, Russell keeps, like, what what Ohio State was— not, 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 and not that Russell had a great three point game this game because he, he did not. Um, he has on in other games come in and hit some three pointers, sort of giving Ohio State what they've been missing, which is like a reliable three point specialist because it's just not something that they've had. Um, not something they've had this season. Uh, you know, they, EJ Liddell is obviously capable of hitting threes. Brenham's obviously capable of hitting threes. Uh, Wheeler is capable of hitting threes, but they don't have, it it feels like you go back in the pantheon of Ohio state, or at least recent Ohio state history. They, they, the best teams have had like a specialist three point hitter and Ohio state's not had that this year. And it's, it's hurt them at times. Yeah, it it definitely is. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Everything else here, I don't. I don't think I want to spend too much more time on Minnesota here. But the second half, like I mentioned before, this is. I would like to see Ohio State have this kind of success for an entire game, and and you will see that there would be, they're like a top ten team, easily. If they can put up, they could put up a full game like they did in the second half against Minnesota. Yeah. I, no. <laughs> this this is that's I don't just don't think that's I don't maybe you know maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm leaning into the the Iowa side the Iowa half of this episode when I say this like this 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 team just isn't isn't that good if they get to the Sweet Sixteen I will be very happy um, there's there's just not a second player on this team I there it. Well, I, I, I think there is. I, I, th- I think there is, um, based on the past couple of games here that we've seen here. And I think, um, I think that's uh, Brenham. I think Brenham has really surged to be that second player here. Yeah. I, re- I really do. I, and I think Brenham's going to be great. I really do. I think, I think he's going to be fantastic. Um, he's, and he's getting more consistent which is what you would expect from a true freshman, right? He's starting to get more consistent. It's starting to slow down for him and all of that. Um, But is he right now, I'm not talking about his potential or his future right now. 
Is he like second best player on a top 10 basketball team material right now? Not right now. No, no, no. But right but that's what I mean. If we talk about Ohio State getting past the Sweet 16 or being a top 10 team, there there's not a second player for that. Brenham yeah. can be that. And I think will be the number one player on next year's team. But we're not talking about next year yet. The, the, the future is very, 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 very bright for Brenham, but he's just not there yet. Not, not to yeah. that level yet. He's great. Yeah. At, he's a starter on an Ohio, on a really good Ohio state basketball team as a true freshman. He deserves a lot of credit and praise for that. But is he like, can he be reliably the, the Scotty Pippen of this team right now? No. That's it. Yep. All right. Um, we're going to take an early uh, commercial break real quick here, ad break, Jared. Uh, and then we'll spend the rest of the time talking about the Iowa game here. So let's let's hear from um, a couple of the flavors that the Iron Bean Coffee Company has over at ironbeancoffee.com. Austin, equal. I, I, I Austin, I said, I, I, I didn't say, but if you're, if you equal. <laughs> All right, Iron Bean Coffee, ironbeancoffee.com. Taking a quick look at the site. Um, let's see, what do we got here today? What do we got here today? First thing I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go over to the samplers. Uh, samplers still, the, the whole shebang is still, guys, you got to jump on those when you can. You absolutely 100% need to jump on those when you can. Okay, let's check out the, ri the Raging Tiger, the Bourbon Barrel. Now, that one sold out. Guys, stuff sells out. These are single origin beans. These are beans that take time. You, you, you can't sit around and then just get stuff when you feel like getting it. You got to jump on these things when you can. Um, and then we've had, oh man, I thought, I thought, you know what? We're going to call this one. The sloop cast effect is what we're going to do right now. Uh, we told everyone about the Irish cream last week. It's one of the coffees we talked about. Guess what? Sold out. Guys, you got you got to you got to get these coffees while you can. You got to get them while they can. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting around for them to get restocked. Is that what you want? I don't think that's what you want. Now, that being said, uh, there have been some other flavored coffees that have been a bit hard to get recently. And outside of the Irish cream, all of the flavored coffees are available. Uh, unicorns available. The salted caramel uh, mocha is available. The vanilla hazelnut, the cinnamon roll, the butter pecan. The peanut butter chocolate buckeye, the bananas foster, the white chocolate peppermint, the Dylan's grog, the intense blueberry, which is one that sells out a lot. The intense blueberry I know does the mom's carrot cake and the mint chocolate chip all currently available. Now, I mentioned the Irish cream last week and then it sold out. So if one of those sounded good, I've cursed them all. At least one or two of those have to be go have to sell out, right? Just like law of averages, that, that's how that works, right? I feel like law of averages is just the thing you say when you are looking for a... Uh, why, why do you think that? Eh, law of averages. That doesn't apply here. It doesn't matter. Law of averages. <laughs> uh, you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Oh, wait, before... No, no, no. Ad's not over yet. Austin down in the chat says i hate coffee and i love the banana foster there you go all right iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster ironcoffeebean.com ironbeancoffee.com all right second game here jared <clears throat> absolutely state, kabuto ohio state losing to iowa 75 to 62 not not the showing that we were expecting Ohio State to to have in this game. It was a 39 to 38 game. And even early on, I thought I thought Ohio State was in a good shape to to really pull away here. There was a point to where Ohio State was up by I think they were up by almost 10 points. Yeah, they were up by 11 points. Yeah. Um early in the in the first half. And 
they just let Iowa get back into it. And I think during that stretch is when Iowa just, they did not look back. They kept, they got back up. They took the lead at halftime and just pulled away in that second half. And Ohio State just got cold. And yeah. I mean, cold. Ohio State was very streaky this game. There were moments in which they were very good. There was moments in which, well, quite frankly, they weren't. Um, Stewart says, go ahead, Jared, pull your britches down and start shitting all over OSU. Aren't, aren't you the guy who's uh, constantly quoting Harbaugh with your third base jokes? Who's shitting on who right now? Uh, yeah, in the se- yeah, in the second half, Jared, the... Ohio State went without a scoring a point for almost four minutes, and then and then they didn't score in the pat in the last three minutes of the game too. Yeah, so, they, they 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 had a they had a, they had a lot of runs of just inactivity scoring the ball. Um, I, I mean it it is what it is. They they mm-hmm. they felt outmatched in this game. Um, they well, aren't. I, I think the I, I think the biggest thing not not so much them. Um, going cold for periods of time. You look at look at one stat here, and this is why Ohio State lost. Iowa had 20 offensive rebounds in this game. 20. 20, Jared. That yeah. is ridiculous. Uh-huh. I, <laughs> I, have, I can't add anything to that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And then um, it didn't help, too. It didn't help, too. This is one of those games Ohio State couldn't... Couldn't hit a three. There were two for 11 in this game. And yeah, just, it was all just a mix of blah. And Ohio State just Ohio State could not pull out a win, win here. Someone asked us during one of our Ask Sloopcast episodes. I want to say it was last week. Maybe it was the week before. Someone says, what does Ohio State need to do to, to get to that next level? You know, if I'm saying Ohio State's a, is a Sweet 16 team. I mean, that's that. And when I say that, I mean, like, I think that's their ceiling. I think that's about as, you know, they if they get a good matchup, maybe they can get a lead eight. But uh, Sweet 16, I think, is like optimistic, not 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 super optimistic, but just leaning optimistic expectation. Right. So how how do you take that next step? Well, first and foremost, they need a center, yep. not not three power forwards, a center. Um, that's that, that is what it is. And we've seen this happen a few times, not just this season, not just this season, but the past few seasons, a lot of these big 10 teams are just huge, just enormous. They have these huge centers and Ohio state never has an answer for it. Uh, it, it's, I mean, Zed Key in this game, and I'm not ripping on Zed Key by any means. They're frequently asking him to play center, and he's not one. He's a power forward. So he's out of position because of the necessity of needing someone there. So I'm not I'm not ripping on him. Um, I'm if anything, I'm ripping on Holtman and the staff for, for not having a center who's worthy of starting on this team. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's t- Zed key uh, barely plays in this game for, by starter standards, Kyle Young's at Kyle Young ends up playing uh, most of those minutes. Um, and if you have to have Kyle Young in there, and again, no offense to Kyle Young, but you're you're losing some length, you're, you're losing some height, which is you know one of the reasons why you're you're in rebounding issues. Um, it's it, it Ohio State's just not big enough in the paint to compete against these some of these Big Ten teams. The, the matchup is just terrible. We've seen it happen over and over again. It's it, this isn't new. This is Ohio State has a weakness that they can't fix. And teams with these enormous players in the paint keep keep exploiting it. And I don't know what there is to do other than to recruit better. Yep. Yep. 
So, Stuart, uh, Caleb Weston wasn't true center, and they did well with him. I, I don't think Cloud State made it to the Sweet 16 with him. Again, we're talking, we're not, we're, we're talking about making it to the next level. When yeah. was the last time Ohio State was a Final Four basketball team? Been, not, been quite a while. Anybody know? 2006. 08, 06 down in the chat. I'm trying to prove a point here. I'm trying to prove a point here. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure my feeling is correct here. Unless there was a, a final four <laughs> gangland says over half of my life. Stop making me feel old, gangland. Last time they made to the final four? Uh-huh. 2012. Okay. Who who was uh they have a center on that team? Well let's let's pull this up. Or did this you just be... now realize that, Stuart? <laughs> oh my god, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was in college at the time. Uh Austin says that was Sully. Yeah. Yep, Maybe yeah, it's so because I was had, in in college had, at the uh, time, Deshaun. but I very, very much remember Ohio State losing to Florida in two separate national title games that year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that 2011-12 year, that was when you had Deshaun Thomas, uh, you had Aaron Kraft, uh, you had Quentin Ross, uh, you had that Ravenel, uh, Lenzel Smith, Buford. It was a good, it was a good class, but... Still missing that that big center though. It, it was a small team. Like your big your biggest starter here was six eight. Wow. Yeah, Siebert was on that team as well. Yep. So okay, my 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 I was I was thinking the last time they find I forgot about that one. I forgot about that one. I was thinking the last time they finaled Ford was the year that they lost to Florida in the national title game. Yeah, that one was in and uh, what 2000 and, that was 2007. Final Ford, is that a thing? Gangland's making fun of me for saying Final Ford. I I'm counting it. I'm I'm counting it. If it's not a thing, it's a thing now. Um <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that and that was the year when they had a true center in Greg Oden. Exactly. Well, which was the point which was the point I was attempting to make. Uh, but yes. I forgot. I forgot that Aaron Kraft and crew uh, went to the final four. Yep. All right. Uh, so, it. So yeah, this is just one of those games. Is just Ohio State just has to find a way to really dig in and find somebody who can get more points. Uh, Brenham in this game, twenty-two points. Like I said, I think he's emerging as that second player. But when you see 20 offensive rebounds in this game, it, it goes back to what Jared and I said about just not having enough big guys on the court to get those rebounds here. So it's, it's going to be tough here when looking at these games, upcoming games here. So on Monday here, they play Indiana. Yeah. Very winnable game. And then this Thursday, they're going to Illinois. They got some big guys there. That's yeah. that's going to be extremely tough. And then next Sunday, they are heading on over to Maryland here, which is a very winnable game here. And Nebraska, so, which is very winnable after that. Yep. And, the, and then the final three after that. So the week after that, Nebraska, home Nebraska, home to Sparty, and then home to maybe a different head coach Michigan <laughs> team. It's uh, or or maybe at least like an acting head coach, mm -hmm. um, if not a new head coach, maybe just an acting head coach, uh, yeah. depending upon how so, that situation shakes out. Um, yeah. So so I said, um, I think it was a couple episodes ago, where I think Ohio State should be, I think the next five games, and I said four and one. Well, they got that one loss there. Yeah, well, <laughs> not the lo not the loss I thought I was thinking it was going to be, but I I I I 
I, I don't want to say like I knew they were going to lose to Iowa because I didn't, but I was always concerned. Like they just don't match up well against Iowa. I'm yeah. not surprised. Am I surprised they lost as bad as they did? Yes. I am 100% am surprised by that. Uh, Kyle, by the way, one of the, cause we, we a while ago did a, how, how do we expect Ohio state to finish? And we sort of did a, I think, but anyway, regardless at the time we thought Rutgers was a really bad loss. Um, but Rutgers has been on a, a pretty nice slate as of late. Um, Picking up some huge wins. Uh, they're currently yeah. playing Purdue as we're talking right now, so we don't know how that one's going to turn out. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're going to lose. They're going to lose that one. Okay, fair enough. But you know what? They haven't lost yet. So what I was about to say still holds true. <laughs> currently on a four-game winning streak against. Ranked Michigan State, ranked Ohio State, ranked Wisconsin, again another team in a little bit of turmoil, and ranked Illinois. So again, as of right now, although what Kyle is saying, probably not when you guys are hearing this, but as we're recording this on a four-game win streak against four top 20 Big Ten teams. Yep. Like... Rutgers, <laughs> it's just like this. This team, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, right, right now, Jared, Rutgers is ahead of Ohio State, and I'm I'm going to count this loss here because it's it's three minutes left. They're they're down by a lot here. So, taking that Rutgers with a loss here, they are a game ahead of Ohio State right now in fourth spot, and Ohio State fifth. That fourth spot gets you that buy in that Big Ten tournament here. So that fourth spot is very important. So Ohio State really needs a pickup to win. Oh, let's see. What did I say? They have two, four, six games left. They got to win, I want to say, like at least four. Five would be extremely, extremely helpful here to finish the season. Yeah, I mean, if you if they want to run de- if they want to run deep in the Big Ten tournament, yeah. Uh, so I mean, if, you, if we look at Ohio State's schedule, Indiana, Illinois, Maryland, Nebraska, Michigan State, Michigan, right? Optimistically, one loss, and 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 that one is a real optimistic. Like last time, I was like, ah, eh, lightly opt. No, that one's real optimistic. I think that's a very optimistic take. I would say that's as good as you can hope for. Uh, to to suggest that they're going to win out from here on out, I think is just not realistic with both Illinois, Michigan State on the schedule. And, you know, not not that Michigan's that great right now, but they can absolutely beat you. And not that Indiana's that great right now, but they can absolutely beat you. So... Two losses feels like a more realistic optimistic. <laughs> um, again, because like even if they go 50-50 against Michigan State and Illinois, which which is not a given. That's not a given. They could easily lose both of those games. <laughs> Gangland says, I'm going to be bold and say they go undefeated. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> bold delusional uh... yeah it's optimistically they go they they go 50 50 in their illinois michigan state games and then they should beat nebraska and maryland but then like Again, you have Indiana and Michigan sitting there, which are teams you should beat, but it's not it's not a given. Yep. So it's yep. it's tough. It's it's a tough schedule ahead. Yep. All right, cool. All right. Um one last one last thing and we'll end this episode uh How many times, Gangland? I mean, if you're going to if you're going to go full SNL Chicago Bears Ditka prediction scale on me, in how many games does Zed Key triple double? 
three. Thank you. What se what seed is Ohio State currently right now? I'd say like a fifth seed, six, five, the, six right now. In the tournament? In the big tournament? Yeah. No, in the NCAA. Is That's yeah. Uh, yeah, the big okay. Yeah. Um I would say fifth right I now. I'd say six. Um All right. Um last last bit of news here. Um Michigan coach um, Howard yeah. um, with pretty much slapping, punching, however you want to call it, uh, Wisconsin assist, assistant coach after like after the game ended here. Like, what is going on with Howard here? This is this is multiple times in in a short period of time. He had that altercation against uh, Maryland, too. And now this here, this is just spiraling out of control. Yeah, and hold on. What's this? Oh, okay. Never mind. There's people asking the question. I opened up Twitter just just to just to check on something, and I saw at least, and I think it was my trending, not, not the trending, but my trending, fired was the uh, top trend. And I thought maybe uh, that... That that a that a trigger had been pulled, but no, uh, yeah, it's not great. Um, well, my mine was. And by the way, just one, Howard gets was, Howard's getting a lot of attention here. We also need to call out Greg Gard. Like this man's not innocent in this. I just want to be very clear about that, right? Like, but he's not the, he's not the one that threw the punch though. He did grab Howard by the arm. He was yelling it. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm. They're both. Ne neither one's in. Like neither one's innocent. They're both guilty. So I'm just saying, like we do need to be fair. Also call out Greg Gard here. That is not me making an excuse for Howard, by any means. You can't throw a punch. You can't be a head coach and throw a punch. Just ask Woody Hayes. No, I, I I understand, Jared. Yes, he, um, Greg Greg Gard definitely should have something done to him too. But it's nothing. It is nothing compared to what Howard did. Like it's not even on the same level field. That's like a one game suspension for Gard versus getting canned for for pull, Howard. Like I pulled up the video, by the way. Just they're not comparable. I just, I pulled up the video. Uh, people might hear um, depending on how I have I'm my about, audio looped right now. People may have heard that. I just wanted to let everyone know. Um, I'm about to Austin. Why? For acknowledging that both of them are guilty. I'm not defending Howard. Just because I said Greg guard also needs to have also needs to face <laughs> discipline and also should have his name thrown around as well. Um, Howard 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 still being triggered from timeout still since 1993. I don't know. To, to me, you don't touch the other guy. They both escalated it. Like if we're talking about escalation, right? They start yelling. They start yelling, and like yelling could it could have stopped at yelling. If it would if it would have if if no one touches anyone, then there's a separation and people can walk away. But Greg Gard escalates the situation by reaching out and grabbing Howard. By the mm -hmm. arm. Yeah. That's an unnecessary. Incre that's that's an enormous boundary push. That's an enormous aggressive act to just um, grab him like that. And then, of course, Howard actually strikes him, which is another huge point of escalation here. It's a huge point of escalation. If they wanted to just yell at each other and be children, then they could just yell at each other and be, you shouldn't have called a timeout. You shouldn't have had your starters in. You shouldn't have been in a full press. Okay, like, okay, like, we, we can talk about all of that. And they could even yell at each other. Don't touch each other. Don't grab anyone. Don't, for God's sakes, don't punch anybody. All right, Jared, 
All right, let's let's go ahead and end um, today's episode. I'll I'll put that as Kyle's corner here talking about I, talking Gangland about Howard I, here. Gangland, I I understand. I understand that, but that doesn't mean you get to grab someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just you can go go over there and yell at him. If you're pissed, go over there and yell at him. That's fine. Go go do that. I mean, it's not fine. It's not great. It's not a great look. I would rather you just maybe be a bit. Uh, I don't know what the word I want to. You want to go be passive aggressive during the press conference? If you want to call out the other guy during the press conference and 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 be mad in the press conference, I think that would be the best way to go about doing it. You want to call him out? Go call him out like that. You don't got to get in his face. You don't got to yell. And when I say you don't got to get in his face and you don't got to yell, that's both of them. Because both of them gave the other one an opportunity to walk away and neither of them took it. Both men at some point were given opportunities to walk away. Neither of them took it. Both men escalated by grabbing and the other by punching. Both men are guilty here. I So again, this is not me defending Howard. This is just me saying we also need to be mad at guard. Howard's catching most of the attention because um, his name's going to drive the clicks, quite frankly. No one who, how many people in the sports world knows who Howard is versus guard? One of them's a huge name, especially, you know, he's a former player and everything else. And the other one is a lot of people are, are, are learning Greg Gard's name for the first time today. So one of those names is going to drive clicks and the other one isn't. And then there's, you know, quite frankly, there's always going to be a bit of, you know, blame the black guy. That's that's that exists. Um, and I'm not and again, I'm not saying that's all of what this is because Howard punched the man <laughs> like there's no there's no disputing that. Um, well, I just I don't think that's what the play is. I, I just don't. uh I just mean from the media reaction standpoint, it has uh, the, the, the race piece has nothing to do with, I would say anything other than there are people who are going to make this part of their agenda, whether it be, you know, I'm going to stop going down this. I'm going to stop going down this, (laughs) this path point is, is that it will be turned into that by some people on both sides to make this that when I personally don't think it is, but the hell do I know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jared, that's, that is all we have for today's episode. Go ahead and kick us off. Go ahead and kick us off. Uh, You said you're going to just, you're doing the Howard thing as, as Kyle's corner. Is that what you were saying? Yes, sir. It's been, it's been a, it's been a slow, slow weekend here jared so i'm I'm glad that came up but (laughs) i'm glad howard's an asshole and that greg guards an asshole uh let's see tonight's ending music will be brought to you by excuse me i was that 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 burp was just gonna happen whether i wanted it to or not um we're gonna go with the hmm we're gonna go with um from the Columbus area, let's go with Mr. Anderson. Um, uh, we were just talking about the Howard situation, Austin. But don't worry, we record these. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's where we're going here. Uh, I've, I'm, I think it's Mr. Anderson. It might be my star, Anderson. I've never found out. This is not the first time I've been confused about this while talking about them on the show. But they're ending today's show. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mr. Anderson.